Well, welcome to the show. Once again, it's the Enterprise Uganda Forums. And um, like we said, Charles, we are moving beyond the COVID-19, post-COVID yeah. forum. Or, yes. We are looking at business tips, how you can make it in business, how we can weather the storm, whether COVID-19 or something else. Again, I'm your host, Charles Boji, and with me in the studio, um, we have a very, very um, quite distinguished guest, uh, but we'll come to that. I'll begin with you, Charles. Uh, good evening, viewers. This is again yet another Sunday afternoon with exciting lessons, exciting tips, and I'm Charles Ochichi, the Executive Director of Enterprise Uganda. Now, this is the point when I unveil our guest. Santa, mm. please greet our <laughs> viewers. Good mm -hmm. afternoon, viewers. It is a pleasure to share with you in partnership with uh, Enterprise Uganda and uh, NTV Uganda. I bring you lots of uh, regards from Ara Papa by Santa Anzo, a fashion house, fashion studio, and the promoters of Made in Uganda through the Uganda International Fashion Week. That's well put. I don't think <laughs> I can <would> do that. <laughs> Very good. Yes, yes. Thank now, you. viewers, today, um, and thank you, Santa, we are looking at the practical business tips on how to start from zero and become a world icon, industry champion, and its leading voice. Now, that's the story we're going to hear. And like we said, our approach is actually to give you these tips from a practical sense of it. Not just in words, but you know, to talk to people that have lived it. We have brought a number of people in our previous shows from different sectors and industries. We know that Different Ugandans have different passions, mm. and yeah. Charles, like you say always, passion mm. is key. Very. is a key ingredient to make it in business. Very true indeed. Uh, exactly. <coughs> so that's why we have this diversity. Today, we're talking fashion, and uh, really you can't talk fashion in Uganda without uh, some <laughs> names, <laughs> and I think Santa's <laughs> name is up there. Yes. Charles, um, yeah. let's go to, the wi to, to it right away. Um, mm. I know the number of people who didn't uh, probably watch last week. Yeah. And uh, those that could have missed a point or two or mm. probably joined us in the middle of the discussion somewhere. Mm. Let's begin with a digest of what we talked about last week. F very good. Yeah. Very good. Uh, viewers, thank you so much. And I want you all to recognize the fact that uh, when we come to these Sunday evening sessions, we want you to learn something. Mm. And we have endeavored to make sure that there is as much variety as possible of the people that come here and share their business life stories. And from those, we distill some key learnings. Last week, we had an interesting young man and the headline learnings were the following. Then I will go and see how those headline learnings are backed by the story we shared last week. The three things that came out of last week were this. Entrepreneurship is an equalizer, an leveler. Whatever you lost, however challenging your journey has been, if you choose the route of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. it gets you back into the game. It gets you back into society and it returns whatever you lost. Whatever life denied you in the past can be yours through effective entrepreneurship. And the key word there is effective. That's where Enterprise Uganda comes in. Number two, location, environment, and age are not limitations to prosperity. Provided you become supplier of competitive solutions to the community. The community is not asking where you were born. They are not asking for your age. They are not asking for your color of the skin. What is the solution you are giving? Number three, people's opinions about you are shaped by the solutions you deliver to the society. What solutions are you delivering? You can change those opinions through delivering solutions that alter the conversations about you. With that background of the headlines, here is the story of, Ole of uh, Gino and how it confirms these three things. According to Gino, uh, Gino, the following points came out. When you love what you do, it becomes easy to become an expert in it. Gino yeah. stopped in senior three. Yeah. But is now a respected and a knowledgeable owner of a tree and fruit nursery, supplying OWC, NOSAF, UCDA, NGOs, and local government. Those are not the organizations you supply just because somebody is sympathizing with you. Mm -hmm. You have to fulfill the, the, the requirements. Number two, starting the way you are, where you are, 
define most success stories, but it is advice that's not taken seriously by many of us. Gino used rudimentary carpentry skills to save to buy a heifer, mm -hmm. sold it to certain nursery. But today, Gino owns 37 acres of land, a modern home, commercial properties, mm -hmm. total value, 700 Sorry, Charles, million. Maybe for our viewers who missed, that's Gino. Uh, the pictures you're seeing running on your screen, uh, that's the story of the entrepreneur Charles is referring to that we had last week. Please. So Gino has a portfolio today of 700 million, a 32 year old, yeah. and somebody who never went beyond s senior four. Three, your very own people, the people who love you and wish you well, could be a roadblock to your breakthrough. Gino's father warned him against selling the heifer because he thought, that heifer, we are seeing it. Whatever you intend to do, we don't know what you will do. <laughs> but today, the father of Gino is a proud dad. Why? Gino bought a lot of cattle and is now educating his siblings. And dad is saying, I love my son. I love my son. Four, saving and reinvesting profits are twin requirements for a journey of entrepreneurship, which is an extremely demanding journey. Mm -hmm. To date, Gino has never bought anything sophisticated. He just has a motorcycle to continue doing what he is doing. He could have afforded a very good car. Just there's something that's coming out of all these entrepreneurs, the component of humility. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You could have showed the, the, the world that, you know, you thought you have a degree, yes. you thought you are a managing director, yes. look at my car. Yes. He said, not necessary. Mm. Let me continue to serve the population. Those rewards will flow by themselves. Mm -hmm. Learning number five. Groups appear to be a good way of reaching many youth. But for those groups to work, they call for structured training in group dynamics and leadership. Gino was a member of a group of 40 people, yeah. it disintegrated because of what? Distrust and jealousy. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not as easy. Yeah. The moment they are even, even two are tough, three gets deeper, yeah. five more complicated, but mm -hmm. we tend to just push this young man, the young people there, mm -hmm. and say, please go and succeed as a group. Mm -hmm. We have given you resources. Managing group dynamics is another thing. It's completely tough and a, diff a difficult game. Yeah. Yeah. Even tough for the most seasoned business people. Yeah. Yeah. Six, when partnerships or groups cease to make sense, despite your very best efforts, let it go. Separate. But when you separate, do what Gino did. He did that but observed what we call in our trainings the three R's when you are separating. R number one is respect yourself. Don't go around shouting and talking about other people. R number two, respect those people you separated with. They were ignorant. You don't know what could have caused them mm. to take the route they took. Mm. R number three, take responsibility so that you stop lamenting about lost opportunities, mm. lost resources. <laughs> the three R's are important when you are separating. Move on. Because you don't know when they will, you will again work together. Yeah. Yeah. Number seven, good human resources is not an easy game for a beginner, for a seasoned person. And Gino started by trying to employ relatives along the way discovered the most important thing is bring a resource mm. that makes a customer a good consumer of your resources. He ended up getting bosses for his businesses from Hoima. Yeah. There were so many Langi people around him. Mm. He said, no problem. Mm. If you want to come, because you don't qualify to be a leader, I've got somebody from Bunyoro. Yeah. And he looked for a profession, an agronomist. A professional, an agronomist. Mm. Very important, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bogi. Yeah. Because we're not simply saying, where is a Munyoro who is desperate? He simply said, I am looking for somebody who come and add value. Yeah. Number eight, success attracts both ridicule and great networks. You will be ridiculed, but you'll also receive amazing networks. Then what? From you know, stories, here is what came out. Some locals attributed Gino's success to child sacrifice. Mm. That young man mm. cannot succeed like mm. that. Mm. Be mm. careful of your children. <laughs> He's going to slaughter them. Mm. But the same Gino also received 
great networks across the country and from abroad, DRC yeah. and Kenya. Mm. Actually, some of them called yes. when we were still on the Exactly. Yeah. They did. They mm. did. Yeah. So you can see the journey of success, please. You look for the, the silver lining all the time. When they are throwing stones at you, there are others who are saying, when I get to Uganda, I must look for Gino. When I get to Uganda, I must look for Gino. The locals are saying, Gino, you have left us behind. Mm. You must have sacrificed children. That's the journey of success. What a beautiful set of learnings. Now, on public youth livelihood programs, according to Gino, many youth have low satisfaction levels and therefore get easily pleased with 1,000. And they think, oh my God, so long as I get my 1,000, this means of struggling, mm -hmm. I don't mind. What was he trying to tell us? He said, it's important to teach the young people that you want to, to, to succeed in business, both technical aspects of the business yeah. and the business mindset. The two must move together. Yeah. And those ones are not fixed by just cash or a handout. Yeah. It's a long process of hand-holding, grooming, and nurturing. Mm. Lastly, from Gino, he said it is okay for youth to offer, to offer public leadership especially when their own lives are a good example. Today, there are many young people who want to go for a position of leadership, and they are just going there because of a job, a salary. Gino said, please go there because you have a story that is, seems to represent good practice, good example in society, mm -hmm. and now when you're a leader, you're able to do that without any disruption. Mm -hmm. And to Gino, a good leader pushes others onto the ladder of success, and leaves them mm -hmm. to climb it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the story of last week. Very and powerful. And, and, I, I, and I'm so delighted. I look forward to today's mm. story. The engagement. Where I will again be summarizing <laughs> the news headlines <laughs> yes, yes, next yes. week yes. for the people who watch this lovely program every Sunday on NTV. And at that point, Charles, uh, yeah. I'll, um, of course, our guest has already introduced herself. Um, but in the business terms or sense, who is Santa and so tell us a bit about your background, your journey in business. Uh, I will say that uh, I love to think of myself as a magical girl, whatever that means. For me, what that means is that I am very grateful. Gratitude is magical. When you say thank you, you actually are able to dismantle, um, silence, and exit any negative vibes <laughs> around you. Mm -hmm. um, what is Santanzo? Where am I from? Is that your question? Well, um, 360 degrees. You can tell us about yourself <laughs> personally, but then the business okay, business. lady, Santanzo. Uh, well, I was, of course, born in Uganda, mm -hmm. down in Mulago, in Kampala. Oh. And uh, I lived... Lady. Yes, I'm a city girl. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no apologies. <laughs> I'm a city girl. I was born in Mulago and mm. uh, my early childhood up to about uh, three, four, three years mm. was spent in um, uh, um, right by Aria Girls. What's that area? Lower Kololo. Kololo yeah. um, yes. um, it's actually Kanjocha Street, Kololo. right, be, right yeah. below Prince Charles. So yeah. that's where my family lived at Near the Lohana. time. Yes. Yeah at the time I was born. Yeah. And so my, my sisters remember their beautiful times with the daughters of the former dictator at Aria Girls. Yes. That school used to be outstanding and Very my, cool. my old, uh, older sisters went there. Oh. But my most memorable also childhood memories are of uh, when this city girl or baby gets literally plucked out of a life of privilege and success and um, dumped into, you know, a, refuge, a refugee camp in South Sudan. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know our turbulent history yeah. and uh, I think as by that time about four and uh, my father was the, I think, human resources manager at the Kinyara Sugar Works. Wow. And so we lived in a nested with only Asians. So imagine the exit of the Asians yeah. and then eventually my father being, uh, you know, well-educated, exposed mm. 
uh, being uh, accused and uh, <coughs> wrongfully mm -hmm. uh, uh, arrested and then brought to Kampala, to Kira Road. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we uh, banished literally to oh. the village in oh. Moyo. Now this city girl mm -hmm. could not eat solid food. I can imagine. My mother had it really difficult with me because, mm -hmm. and mommy, thank you so much. I know you're watching. Because uh, I couldn't eat anything solid. By the time we go to the village, I was just a milk child, taking mm -hmm. milk. Mm -hmm. So my, my uncles tell me stories of how daddy had to come back home at lunchtime and feed me because mommy thought, where are we going with this spoiled mm -hmm. child? But mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. imagine in that situation, yeah. you are very soft, you're born into a soft landing yeah. and then you're in the village mm. and then the civil war moves from Kampala, from Kinyara Sugar Works yes. into West Nile. We know the story of how West Nile was bombed and yes. burnt to ashes to mm. the ground, animals, human beings, our hearts and all. So I was in the middle of that and so I had to find my way into southern Sudan Amidst bullets raining, dead bodies, my parents met my mother, not my father, because my father we all thought was dead. Mm. So my parent, my mother met me in one of the, you know, little gatherings of uh, the refugees in South Sudan. Wow. So <laughs> that's my childhood, uh, my most memorable experience. Mm. And then, of course, you know, uh, I got back into Kampala, I think about three years later, when we finally heard that daddy was actually alive. But my dad had, uh, had also been beaten, taken for dead. He was picked up by an Italian priest by the roadside because they knew him was a good man, a mm. good a young man from the seminary. Yeah. They trained him. He was an excellent student, so the mm. he lived <laughs> with the priests, the Italian priests. So mm. this guy is driving, and there's a swarm of flies by the road, and the priest says, you know, sort of like the, the, the Good Samaritan story. Yes. Mm. The priest says there must be a human around. around mm. So he looks, he stops his car, looks over, and turns this body, and he says, oh, my God, this is my son. I know this, you know, young man, and he mm. picks up daddy, puts him into his car and takes him to Lacho Hospital. Anyway, that's how my dad survived and that's yeah. how he worked his way back to normalcy and that's how I was able to be brought back from the wilderness where I ate leaves. <laughs> my mm, mother who, my mm. mother was working, plowing or weeding or whatever other people's gardens because mm. we had no land. Mm. Mm. And I remember we had to dig about man, meters and meters deep in the sand of South Sudan mm. to get drops of water <laughs> wow. to drink mm. drops of water. It's a dry area, by and large. Mm. Yeah, mm. so, but hey, like I said, mm. magic happens yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it happened for me. As a business lady, I am, um, I will call myself, uh, first of all, I'm a, Fashion is passion. So okay. I'm a fashion designer who's very passionate mm -hmm. about what I do. I'm a fashion promoter. Mm -hmm. I believe that, uh, you know, I believed that uh, not only one person or a few people yes. had this talent in Uganda. And so once I broke into the market, I had this constant um, need deep inside of me to actually open up this industry. Launch myself was done, but now I had to open up the industry mm -hmm. to ensure that more talent was discovered, promoted, developed, mm -hmm. and that actually <coughs> Uganda got an identity mm -hmm. at the international fashion mm -hmm. platform. Mm -hmm. That is what I made my, 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 my call. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Santa, because yes. I mean, that is, um, I'm quite touched by that story, <laughs> the beginning. Because um, a number of people never recover from such mm. um, an experience. Yeah. Mm. They will spend the rest of their life exactly. feeling sorry mm. for yeah. themselves. Yeah. And uh, also, you know, y they disengage themselves from activities mm. and mm. Uh, businesses probably mm. that would. Mm. Because the industry where you sit, I call it the industry <laughs> for the assertive. Exactly. Yeah? 
Yeah. How did you, you know, um, transpire over this to, to become a very innovative yes. and extremely demanding yes. sector? Yes. Uh, first of all, I am born of very patriotic parents. Yeah. My father and mother have taught me only one thing, excel and give. And yeah. that is the, their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They've given so much away of themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that background, I knew that um, I had to be the answer okay. and I had to be the solution yeah. to this sector that I was called into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I had to keep my focus mm. on the goal. Yeah. And also, uh, you know, I grew up as a daddy's girl. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so I always wanted to make my father, proud. you know, very proud. Yeah. And, and I, I, I used the wisdom of my mother, which is work hard, to ensure that whatever challenges faced me, I was going to approach them from an angle of gratitude yeah. and transforming that situation into a positive. Uh, I could have sat back and said, oh, poor me, you know, I was born well, and now look at this war. But that could have just served a great BBC, CNN story. Yeah. And end of, end of it, here we had a Uganda that was coming out of very turbulent times. Jobs were not enough. Some of us were creative enough. So my passion for fashion uh, did not give me a rest either. I had to make sure that I had these clothes made. <laughs> I had to wear them. And I had to get these many girls and boys, my age, by the way, mm -hmm. that were interested in the same field. I had to dress them, and I had to make sure that we had employment. That's a good so, one. So... Uh, uh, yes. Santa, hold it there. Um, Charles, this is the yeah. point where I want you to really come in. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. Santa here makes a very, very powerful um, yeah. Uh, yeah. introduction for us today. Very true. And very I true. think there are key lessons that Ugandans can pick here. There are very many. Yeah. yeah. But I will hi highlight maybe two or three. Mm. The first thing is that never watch a story of glory and imagine it all started like that. Mm. Who would have imagined a lady who went through this kind of beautiful experience, then bang, you go to the very lowest of life. Yeah. Mommy is an employee of a villager where mommy goes <laughs> to dig for food. <laughs> yes. That is an extreme case. Yes. And for yes. a child to recover from that, the trauma there is unbelievable. It is. So, but then she puts out a few th points that are really fundamental for life. And one thing that she has mentioned at least three times, is a key word, gratitude, yeah. gratitude, yeah. gratitude. There are many things that will come your way, yeah. and if you have not, nothing at all to be grateful for, even just life, you actually disappear to that darkness. That's right. She also had something that she I thought was useful for parents out there. She said, my parents had two things. They said, please excel, but don't just excel for yourself. Excel and give. That deserves to be caught up in what you would call material for training families. Don't teach your children to excel for the sake of self-satisfaction. It is for the sake of changing and transforming society. Mm -hmm. And your self-satisfaction will be broader and deeper. But she also said now, when she went into the fashion industry, she said, I will wear what I produce, and I want people to begin to appreciate it confidence in what you produce. Yeah. You own a clinic and you want to take your child to another clinic for, <laughs> for treatment. You own a school and you are taking your child to another yes, school yes. for studies. She said, I will produce what I will be happy to wear, yeah. and even my employees will wear some of these costumes or, or garments. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant uh, beginning already of this discussion. Absolutely. Mm. Now, um, Sata, so you begin the business and um, of course, you've, talk, you've told us about the hustle you had to go through. Because, yeah. I mean, with that kind of background, definitely you must have built from scratch. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, paint for us a picture of um, how now you make it sustainable. Because exactly. the start is always, 
Yes. I mean, there's a lot of energy you want to go into <laughs> it and that kind yeah. of thing. But some yes. people burn up, get, I mean, they burn out at a certain mm. point. Others get distracted. Others, I mean, mm. there are so many things that happen. And you, I'm sure you know the story of the mortality rate of business in this country. Yeah. Yes. How yeah. did you manage yeah. to make it yeah. sustainable? Like <clears> I said, I'm, I'm a very passionate person. Mm. And everything that I get myself into has to succeed because what I offer is priceless. Mm. I am very passionate. Mm. Now, when you are passionate about something, in fact, I always tell the younger you know, upcoming, they say, look, if you're coming into this for the light, for the glamour, for the paparazzi, for the power and money, yeah. don't, you know, don't think twice mm. because we have had more, uh, <laughs> more dark days than the lit up days, I will say. And what has kept me going is the fact that I know and I know and I know mm. that I'm in the right path. Yes. I know and I know and I know that fashion or clothing yeah. is a sector much as it is not known in this country yes. as such. Yes. It has actually, you know, uplifted world class economies such yes. as Italy, mm. such yes. as France, mm. Paris, we know Paris for fashion, mm. Milan, that's Italy, we know them for fashion. Mm. Uh, the USA, New York, LA, I mean, these are all powerful fashion capitals, London, mm -hmm. and what got them there? What got them there is the fact that, you know, they invested heavily in, mm -hmm. in this industry, not just, um, you know, not just clothing per se, yeah. but the entire supply chain was activated, developed and empowered. Yeah. I, I, I had seen glimpses of this mm. in the movies that my father would bring back from Italy. Yes, <laughs> yes. I would yes. watch them, mm. pick mm. something, and I would say, you know what, this is the life the I actually want. Want to live. Mm. Yeah, mm. not, not, mm. not mm. less. Mm. And, uh, and so I was able to tap into these economies. Yes. Then we didn't have the internet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I read a lot. I read magazines, I read textbooks, I researched, I watched movies. And then I decided that, like I said from the beginning, yes. these things must happen for Uganda. Yeah. If I want to live like an Eskimo and I'm in Uganda, I'm going to form that lifestyle for myself. Mm. And so I remember my first runway, first catwalk runway, or oh, whenever there was a... Um, uh, a limitation of fashion shows. I'll use Kampala Road. I'll dress up. <laughs> <laughs> arrive, in, <laughs> arrive in the old taxi park, mm. all dressed up like I'm going on a fashion runway. Mm. <laughs> and then my first posture, you know, my first professional walk mm. would start from the Pioneer Mall. Viewers, oh sorry, <laughs> sorry, Santa, that's a good one. Viewers, we have some of Santa's works on the screen. Uh, I'm sure you can see them. That's a, that's a, that's, that takes courage, eh? It takes a lot of, I don't know, you know, you now say it takes courage. Mm. And yes, when I look back, I say, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite but something. But for me, mm. it was burning and I needed to do it. And there was no platform. So yeah. they, I'm telling you, the shopkeepers, their employees, all of those on Kampala Road, they knew that at 11 a.m. Yes. she will be walking. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be, in the <laughs> they'll be in the shop windows. Mm. And, mm. and yeah, and mm. so the passion for it. Mm. And also, when you know yourself, what are your values? Yeah. Those values drive you. Come rain, come shine, you're not going to die out. Like mm. I said before, I'm very grateful. Yeah. But I also know that I've been called into a position of leadership. Yeah. So spirituality is something I turn on like that. Mm. I had the submission of Lino, the guest you had before me. Mm. And I was quite, I, I identify with each of his struggles. <laughs> <laughs> the experiences could have been, you know, slightly different. Yes. But I'm telling you the story is the same. Mm. There will be times that even those you think mm. you're working so hard for, mm. or those you expect to say thank you, oh no, yeah. in yeah. this part of the world, in yeah. Africa, yeah. or in, in the black world, mm. it is very rare and to I've get seen a thank so you. That's a good point, actually, sometimes <laughs> that you're raising. Because I've seen so many people who feel, you know, dejected, very mm. disappointed, 
because they feel <coughs> the people they want to touch mm. are not seeing what they are doing mm. what they're doing yes. or they are not mm. just appreciative mm. and that mm. throws them off balance totally mm. well that's mm. where spirituality comes into play mm. even as i walk into your studios even as i parked my car i was praying i don't have to pray for anybody to know mm. that i am praying i talk to my god i'm so in touch mm. with my inner self which is where god lives mm. i don't believe that god mm. is up there mm. i believe that like jesus said mm. The kingdom of God is in our hearts. Mm. And so I'm tuned on to that. Mm. So that mm. come rain, come shine. Mm. When I don't get that thank you from the people that I think I should get it from, mm. I, um, I, I now know that I quickly have to tune into That's the great one. I am. That's a good one, Santa. Yeah. Charles, you thought that uh, Jeno was more evangelical. <laughs> now you have, uh, but I think <laughs> the place, your spiritual yes. place, yeah. You know, your mind being in a good place, your very spirit, true. I think, is a very, very important very, aspect very for true. business. Mm. What do we pick from here, Charles? Uh, first of all, in her beginning of uh, commenting on what you asked her, she connected, first of all, by saying, this thing I'm about to connect with, how does it feature anywhere outside Uganda? Yeah. And mm. she watched what was happening in New York, mm. Milan, where, and <coughs> what have you. Yes. And she saw big economies being built mm. on that word fashion yeah and she began to hang in there in other words it was not just what you call abnormal utopian excitement yeah. mm. it was grounded on something she saw working yeah. and said that is working in milan that's working in uh, rome that's working in new york it can work here mm. Mm. and then the vision began to consume her mm. she said i'm going to be the representation of this calling Looking at her, putting on her costumes at home, <laughs> and those costumes are normal, abnormally too, <laughs> too outstanding yes. that uh, you actually attract attention. Say, no, I'm going to do my catwalk on Kampala Road. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that yes. would have been the first say, stop it. Yes. Yes. This is wrong, stop it. Oh, yes. Yes. But then she said she got consumed with it and she had values, believing that it's not about what dad may be fearing. Mm. I yes. know myself, I've got my boundaries. I will not cross a line. Please, Daddy, let me fly. Mm. So you can see the thread is not what you just call something miraculous. Mm. She, no. And then she saw it. I read a lot. I researched a lot. I learned a lot. Mm. You don't just present yourself, I'm a girl. <laughs> I think let me just start <laughs> being in fashion. Mm. No. It's well not thought out. All. It's deliberate. Yeah. Exactly. I think I love that. And mm. I like mm. the fact that you already had an outlook at that, you know, stage. Yes. That early stage. Mm. You're looking at the value chain. Yes. That fashion mm. is not just at the end. And, yeah. and, and I'd like to ask you this because, I mean, um, and it happens a lot. If mm. you look at it at a broader level, Charles. Yes. In Africa, we tend to produce clothes. Yeah. Or textiles. <laughs> mm. We don't uh, produce labels. We don't produce no. brands. No. <sighs> Yeah. If there are sleeves and it can fit you, go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and yet, I would imagine, you can advise me, you're well mm. grounded in that uh, space. Yes. Mm. I believe we have the best materials to actually produce the best. You know what? Right now, I am so grateful to my mentor, by the way, yeah. uh, Mr. Charles Ochichi, mm. you know, because he has cause this conversation to happen at a very critical mm. time. <coughs> Here we have a president mm. who has come out and declared that fashion or clothing is the second most important survival economy yeah. for Uganda post-COVID-19. Among us, the top five, mm. the first one being food. Mm. And then, of course, we have health, you know, shelter. We don't walk around naked. So why am I shouting myself mm. to all these ministers or leaders, decision makers, policy makers, mm. that this is a serious sector? Why does it take the president to see this far? Why does he have to be the only visionary? Mm. Well, thank God he is. But, you know, thankfully, you know, mm. um, uh, Mr. Charles has come around. Now, look. We have so much to offer as Uganda. Mm. First of all, I was mm. in, uh, on a webinar organized by um, Center <coughs> for Advanced Strategi Strategic Leadership for Africa. Mm. That was by Dr. James Magara. Mm. Now, when we spoke, uh, 
the question was, you know, this, what is this? I mean, what fashion? So what? Yeah. Yes. I was, I heard that one of the dealers in clothing, big, you know, manufacturer in Uganda did say that uh, he was getting uh, poked by the Egyptians at an international convention mm -hmm. that, oh no, Uganda don't talk, Egypt has the best cotton. Yes. But I, I corrected him. I said, no. You yeah. know, I'm a student of mo as well, Mr. Kashiwada, formerly oh, yes. of uh, Phoenix. Yamato, yes. Phoenix yes. Logistics. Yes. Mm. So I've, I had lots of chats with him. And I learned that actually, and I'm grateful that he also listened to me. I was 25. I was like, you know, oh, oh. Wow. she's yeah. crazy. Most, most business leaders and decision makers uh, just closed their doors mm. to me. And they thought, this is a crazy girl. Yeah. But people <laughs> like him, you know, listened to me. And I yeah. learned from him that I wasn't just dreaming fashion. Uganda actually has a, um, a privileged position mm. together with Egypt. In the entire world, we have the best cotton, Uganda and Egypt. In now, the entire world. Egypt, yes, Egypt has whiter cotton than ours. But I told this meeting, I said, look, I know for a fact that Uganda has a longer yarn. Mm. So what is white? What is <laughs> color when mm. you have the longer yarn? Yeah. That is durability. That is strength. Yeah. We have been growing cotton since 1903 when the British introduced it to us. Why haven't we moved with, with Britain, for instance, yeah. with Italy into that space? Yeah, at least a second-class economy. The reason is because we have not developed the sector. We have focused on growing the raw material because that is what the colonial bastards conditioned us to do. We are the peasants. We are the ones growing the cotton, and then they ship it out and send us back fashion. Mm. Clothing is fashion. Fashion is not just the, the beautiful models, the paparazzi, the lights, <laughs> all that. You, no. No, fashion is a multi-billion, actually trillion dollar industry, mm -hmm. you know. And just like agriculture and transport, just like communication and tourism, you know, just like uh, petroleum and gas, the fuss we make about petroleum, we can exist without petroleum. Right. We can exist without all these minerals we are making so much noise about. We can exist without security. I know it's important, but the truth is, even the president said we can exist without all these things, but we don't walk around naked. So Uganda <laughs> has quality <laughs> cotton. Yeah. That yeah. is our advantage, mm. number one. But number <coughs> two, <coughs> fabrics are not only made from cotton. Yeah. Fabrics are made from pineapple, for instance, as well, which we grow in millions mm. as well. We and actually we have some of the best pineapples in the world, I would imagine. <laughs> and we eat the fruit mm. and throw away, are yeah. they called leaves? Yes. Those yeah. green spikes yeah. there? Mm, yeah. Those make some of the best fabrics. Philippines is leading in that. Coffee too has fabric made out of it. But let me just conclude by saying, the cow horns from Ankole, yeah. those make some of the most prestigious fashion accessories for bags, even for clothing, for jewelry. Yeah, the skin from Karamoja, the mm. beads from Karamoja, then, you know, the hand-woven stuff from Buganda here. Mm. We have the size, so we have, you know, the banana fibers. Mm. We have clay. You know, there's so much richness in northern Uganda. My people, for instance, we have beautiful beads as well, the muddy. Mm. We have sap, fruits produce, you know, trees produce fruits. Some of these trees give us sap. Mm. or even their fruits themselves can be, you know, um, recycled. Mm. We can make lots of fashion um, products out of this and actually make money. Why <coughs> is it that we always wait like we did for coffee? Mm. Until recently, we were just growing the coffee. That's right. And then it's bought and taken to Europe or the USA, and then it returns Processed as Nescafe, and, return exactly. and then we pay top dollar mm. for it. So fash Uganda has so much to give. Mm. Each region in Uganda can be activated, developed to support a particular program product. Hold it there, uh, Santa. Mm. Um, mm. Charles, mm. very important aspects here. Mm. But before I, c I bring you in, I wanted to ask Santa, at what stage, because we, know, we all know what happens at Enterprise Uganda, mm. yeah. did you feel <laughs> that you needed... Um, mm to go to Enterprise Uganda. <laughs> and what did you get from there? 
<laughs> it was at this burning stage, as you can see now. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, I was okay. The passion had been activated. <laughs> Full blast. <laughs> I was now in the market. I was producing. I was dressing the who and who's. I had like all the corporate companies in this country, you know, designing their mm. clothing. You had made uniforms. your mark. I'd mm. made my mark, but mm. I needed to build an enterprising business. Yeah. I needed to know my money. Mm -hmm. I also <laughs> needed to remain grounded <coughs> so that I don't fly mm. away with this passion <laughs> and forget that my role was to actually make something good out of it for myself yeah. and then also for the people around me, for my community. Yes. I also needed to learn the basics of entrepreneurship. I had to learn that you don't just sit back. Luckily, I'm, I'm, I'm also from a very grounded family, so you want my dad will never act like the boss, and he's always been the boss. Mm -hmm. And my mom is also always working with the maids. Mm. So you find that I, uh, I know that I, um, I don't just cross my legs and, mm. and let them work. But yeah. at Enterprise Uganda, it was actually made very practical for me that I had to lead my staff, that... I did not have to sit back cross-legged and let them and watch them yeah. struggle or fail. Mm. There are times when as the entrepreneur or as the owner of the business, you take off that hat and actually mm. get your hands dirty, dirty. to mm. make sure deadlines mm. are met. Mm. So mm. it's mm. at that point when <coughs> I needed to actually make meaningful business mm. out of this <laughs> talent <laughs> that I, I had to look for Mr. Ochit. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily I was admitted, so I am a certified <laughs> emperor <-teco>. Oh, <laughs> yes. that's a good one. <laughs> Charles, this is where yes. you come in. Yes. Um, quite powerful there. You really did create an impression on Santa here. I want the viewers to recognize something that has come out of this great lady. Uh, one, there's talent. Mm. And then talent gets boosted by motivation. Mm. Through the family supporting you, those should have been sufficient ingredients. Mm. But the business world demands beyond this. Yeah. Yeah. And the lady discovered, and that's where I bring in a keyword, humility, yes. that she had limitations on what it meant to manage other people. It's not just about passioning and um, pushing them. Uh, they don't have your exact passion. Yeah. They don't have your exact vision. You need to have the skills on how to get them to catch your vision. And that is something you've got to learn. Mm. Delegation. It's not just about saying, I did this myself. Why can't you also do it? It's an art. It's a skill. Mm. It's something you learn over time. Mm. Now, to bring in, you have got the talent. You are motivated. The family is supporting you. You now need to bring in those business angles to really say, how do we create mm. a business person out of Santa? Because indeed, she is in there not just to survive for today or tomorrow. Something sustainable must be backed by clear principles. And that's where all the elements of running a business come in. We're talking of human resources. We're talking of marketing. Mm -hmm. We're talking of customer care. Mm -hmm. We're talking of managing money. She said, now, I needed to know my money. Yeah. Yeah. Money could keep coming in. If you don't know how to look <laughs> after expenses, yes. whatever has come in may be much less mm -hmm. compared to mm -hmm. the expenses you have spent mm -hmm. to bring in a solution. Mm -hmm. The lady said, I needed now to know my money. Now, <coughs> this is where we say, please, no matter your level of talent, no matter your level of desire to serve the community, can you ground it with proper business skills? Charles, it's very interesting because mm. mm. um, many people who have made their money yeah. are really, really tough to advise and counsel. Correct. <laughs> Especially, they first look at you, yes. the person who's trying to advise yes. them, and then they look at themselves, yes. and then back at you. Yes. And they're like, you know they what? They have sized you up. Yes. <laughs> who are you? Yes. yes. <laughs> What's your track record? What, why do, do you even deserve to give me advice? Absolutely. And that's why we have had reality. Fewer business brands in this country that survive on a long-term basis. Mm. You were pushed by this energy, but up to a certain point. She's told you she now had top clients. 
producing great brands. Yeah. But as these numbers blow up, mm -hmm. you now need to bring other individuals. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is where it begins to become tough. Mm -hmm. Because separating now Santa from the real business, which now needs you to now give the vision, mm -hmm. and yet you used to be the hands-on person. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. Very difficult indeed. Extremely difficult. Santa, where are you now? At what <coughs> stage are you in, in terms of fashion and industry? Okay, we are two things. <laughs> we are definitely a very premium brand in this country. We are, we are a, a leader, okay. you know, thought leader. Uh, we are quite recognizable, mm -hmm. not only here, but, you know, internationally. Our brand is not new anymore yeah. in, in, in Europe. It's not new in the rest of Africa, especially South Africa. We are not new in the USA. We've been, you know, celebrated in San Francisco, in Atlanta, in Arizona, in LA, you know, in mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. So we actually lost two huge events this year in Washington, D.C. that were actually going to be quite a stamp because for of the made in Uganda. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we are, again... <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Chich is very well versed with these mm. scenarios. Okay. But I will tell you that with all of this, we are again back to the drawing board. Mm. With COVID-19, a lot has changed. Mm. I have actually kick-started industry talk shows called The Business Behind Fashion, mm -hmm. where you know, we, 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 we give you know, uh, uh, solutions we talk about solutions, mm. not only from within Uganda, but for instance, uh, on Tuesday, I'm hosting Nigeria and okay. Tanzania. Okay. I have had uh, Cape Town, South Africa, I've had London, I've had, you know. So we are going global with these talk shows. But the reason we are doing that is because just like tourism, the mm. sector of fashion has been hit the hardest yeah. uh, <coughs> during this coronavirus era. Yeah. And we have been stripped of almost everything. Most of our suppliers yeah. uh, you know abroad and I'm talking South Korea I'm talking Italy I'm talking even Dubai I'm mm. talking lots of shops have been closed mm. um, lots of manufacturing plants have ceased yeah. uh, I know that uh, Asia is actually suffering a little bit more than most of us because for them they depended a lot on Europe and yeah. the USA mm. for orders for business all of that has been cancelled so retailers have closed their doors. Arapapa has been partly a retailer. We had an outlet at the village mall in Bugolobi. Mm -hmm. I had to quickly make up my mind in March mm -hmm. when the, the lockdown was announced. Because you see for us before Uganda declared uh, you know, mm. a national lockdown. The, the lockdown, yes. We had been hit in January. Already, the yes. minute. Mm. China was hit, the rest of the world. Our suppliers mm. were hit. Yes. Whether the in supply Europe, chain they were was hit. disrupted. Yes, and mm. so when you get to Uganda, we felt the pinch. Oh. And we could see clearly that what was now selling was clothing, uh, was um, pharmacy, yeah. <laughs> the medical, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and food. And other yeah. basics, yes. So we have had to close our, um, our, 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 um, uh, our retailing, mm. you know, store. Mm. But it also came with a beautiful opportunity. Mm. I had a World Bank written proposal three years ago, and I had never activated it because the retailer, in the store, the fashion shop was keeping me busy. Mm. And so I never really focused mm. on the bigger picture. Mm. This... <coughs> The lockdown gave you... An opportunity to rethink, mm. to reinvent myself, to reimagine That's situations. Cool. And yes. then I was able to call the consultant and say, look, we have an opportunity. And mm. he said that opportunity is not working until the shop okay. is closed oh. because it's taking all your time and yet the future is in production. And I said, no, I have already submitted mm. Mm. <laughs> my intention mm. yeah. to... Terminate mm. my tenancy. Yeah. And so I was then, we were able to jubilate and mm. say, okay, now we are thinking alike. Mm. I was able to brief my 
uh, my executive board as able to share with them my new I and they thought Santa this is brilliant mm -hmm. and when I'm talking executive board I'm not talking of wealthy you know <laughs> billionaires la you know <laughs> living large no there are people like me mm. hustling you know when you add the word executive <laughs> Yeah, mm. <laughs> they are mentally executive. We are seeing far. That's We're going to leave one. this That's this world. One. Yeah, and so um, I this COVID situation has helped me realize that the dreams I have mm. for actually creating employment because fashion is worth three trillion US dollars globally, yeah. Mr. JJ. Yes. Wow, and yet China takes forty six percent of that money. Wow. 37% goes to the EU, mm. led by Germany. Germany mm. has overtaken Italy. Mm. Mm. And then the US, of course, also has its chunk. Mm. But then Africa combined, our 10 biggest manufacturers and exporters combined, earn only 0.5% of mm. that money. What happened here? It is sad. It is sad. Yes. Right. And so I said, Santa, you are the answer mm. to this. Mm -hmm. We have a problem of... 77% unemployment mm. for, uh, for yeah. our youth. Yeah. And yet, no, we are 77% youth. Yeah. We are a very young economy. Mm. Very true. And yet, 83% of the 77 are unemployed. Mm. Or oh, unemployed, mm. actually, mm. some. Mm. Mm. These are unemployed. <laughs> there's <Aye>. no <laughs> under, there's <laughs> no opportunity. Aye, aye. There's no sugar coat. <laughs> yes. yes. And so I sat <laughs> back and I said, but wait a minute. These are youth, which means they're very dynamic. They excite. They, they have so much to give. They have yeah. so much energy to offer. Mm. And so instead of sitting back and saying, oh, poor youth, we have no opportunities, I thought, no. Mm. This is a sector that mm. is able to offer them all that they are looking for. Thank the you, Santa. So mm, <laughs> sorry to cut you short. Charles, I think uh, a very important point there. Um, yeah. yeah. I yeah. like the yeah. board idea. Exactly. Because most people, different. when you talk about board, yeah. like you rightly put it, Santa, I mean, we think this big wealth yeah. guys and that kind <laughs> yeah. of thing in suits. Over glorified. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. But what are your key learnings for yeah. our people? Yeah. What do you yeah. distill out of this? Now, first of all is that um, she was on her journey and continuing quite well. She quickly reads the science and says, it's getting bad. It's time to rethink the thing quickly. Mm. Now, that foresight is something that you must give an entrepreneur credit for. Yeah. It's hard for somebody to abandon what has appeared to work. By the time you're able to get a place in Village Mall, Bugolobi, mm. yeah. you are a name. Yeah. And do you know what happens around that time? <laughs> Everybody saying our Santa, yes. even as a branch in <laughs> Village Mall. Mm. Now that is pride. <laughs> yes, you could have just hung in there <coughs> to confirm a point that I belong there, I have a place there, yeah. and you are burning resources. Yeah. She said, "I'm reading ahead. The thing is not working out." Mm. For mm. her, she had begun to see the effect from January when China got disrupted. Mm. Now, instead of saying quickly, "I am the great one. I know what I'm going to do." Mm. She said, mm -mm. <laughs> let me bring some individuals and bounce again the ideas with somebody. Again, that is an act of humility and a great leader. Yeah. I built it to keep saying, I built respect, but I will listen to somebody else. Mm. And so many people will never find that one a necessity. Mm. And many of our businesses have had that challenge. And now what she has simply done is, the title may be appearing so glorious, but these are in individuals, as she said, no more people like her, but people who are honest. Mm -hmm. yeah. People will say, in our view, this needs to be confirmed. In our view, this needs to be clarified. Mm -hmm. Very, very key. Quite powerful. Yeah. Santa, I want mm -hmm. you to mention, just briefly, I know because your <coughs> experience, your story right from mm. the beginning to where we are today has really been lessons probably to someone announcing ambitions of joining the industry yeah. but just a brief in the maybe three minutes of if there's a young ugandan or older ugandan out there watching us and is announcing ambitions of joining the fashion industry what would you tell them <laughs> i i would say first of all rediscover yourself mm. who are you what are your values what is it that you're very passionate about? Yeah. What are your tie lines? Yeah. 
are they in line with fashion? I would then advise them to actually look beyond just their personal needs. We are in a country that has needs. Number one, employment. What are you going to do about that? Are you ready to be a solution, an answer to these problems? Or are you looking to tech, tech, tech? You might tech, but there's going to be a, a time to give. Very good point, Asanta. We'll pick it mm. from there. Viewers, mm. we're going to take a very short commercial break. Again, this is the Enterprise Uganda Business Forum. We're looking at the practical business tips on how you can make it in business, weather the storm, COVID-19 or otherwise. We'll pick it from there. Mm. Dear viewers, welcome back. We're again on the Enterprise Forum. Uh, we're looking at practical business solutions, uh, picking experiences from the expert, the coach, and then also a business lady, our distinguished guest this evening, Santa Anzo. Now, Santa, I want to move to the point of uh, government is now pursuing a policy of import substitution, which would definitely mean that um, we should have some of these things we import. And I've heard the president talking about this passionately, mm -hmm. about uh, especially women's hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, he <laughs> believes we can do better as a country. Yes. Now, I want to pick your mind. I know you touched a little on that. Um, one, um, do you feel that policy trickling down to you as a player in this sector? Uh, and then two, what do you think should be done to actually make this policy succeed? so that you can derive dividend from buy Uganda, build Uganda? I think, as I'm sorry, I'm limited <laughs> to opinions mm. that I have uh, sought and those that have been very open to share with me. Mm. And uh, number one is the president. Mm. And he, unfortunately, I feel that he's on a, at another level. He's a visionary. He sees far. That is why he can come out and declare and say this is a three trillion dollar business. Mm. Clothing. Clothing is fashion. Fashion is clothing. And we must take it seriously. And I am telling you right there, it almost dies a natural death. Because when you look around, yes, this is the second most important survival, but I love to call it the growth economy. It's a growth economy. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's very enterprising. But right there, the second most important sector out of five has zero representation. Across the board, we are definitely not represented in parliament. Mm -hmm. We are not represented at the executive level. There is no ministry. Yeah. I have sought the audience of his, uh, uh, the right honorable prime minister, and he was... He said, Santa, I know you, you need no introduction, we need to support you. But then he says, where? <laughs> 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 and then he will work his way. Mm. Let me call trade, let me call industry. Mm. Yes, they'll listen to him yeah. and it will die. Mm. Because mm. there are no support systems. Yeah. Other sectors have like five representatives. Five representatives. Yeah. I can name them, but it's not necessary. Mm. Yeah? You have a sector of maybe transport with about five different government agencies, fully funded supporting it. The yeah. same goes for agriculture. How mm. many subsections mm. do we have representing agriculture? Now, you have, you know, the same for petroleum. Mm. What is the amounts being invested? Tourism. A lot is being done, but this second most important I sit back and I say, look, is this a pro, are, are we so unfortunate as <laughs> black people in Africa? Are we, <laughs> have we been so mentally enslaved mm. to the point that we have to only grow cotton and wait for China to dump their hazardous garments in our, in our markets? Mm -hmm. And he mm. said it, he mm. said, these, these people in their caves, mm. the president said that, I have him on camera, I listen to him because mm. if, I, I, if I, I need someone to believe in my sector, and he has. Yeah. But you see, 
she said there are kids, there are markets for China and India. Mm -hmm. How sad. It is sad indeed. And, and there's, there's just, there's no trickle down. I, I am an industry leader. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I have been since shaking hands with the president. I have met him on several occasions, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy and proud to say that because he saw, he mm. saw more than maybe I even saw myself. Mm. And yeah. his belief in me caused me to not stop as all. I have to make sure mm. that I deliver on the promises I made to him. That's a good and, and the pro but, but the mm. point is, mm. beyond that, there's almost nothing. nothing. Everybody... Mm. Either doesn't understand, either they think, oh no, you know, she's she's a model. Mm. And I think, yeah, I'm a model, <laughs> and I'm proud of it. I used to be, yes. I used to be a model, and I'm very proud of it. And yes. I would still be a model, yes. but now God changed the call. It's bigger than now. Than yes, it yeah. is. It is. You know, modeling is part of the fashion industry because the models are like, um, how can I put it? For instance, petroleum <laughs> has <laughs> Shell, Total, yeah. and all. The yeah. models are that for us. No, no. I garments are worn by humans. Exactly. And, and the <laughs> best human beings have mm. to show off the garment. And I think you put it quite mm. rightly at the beginning because this is an entire value chain. Yeah. It can start with the farmer down there who's growing mm. cotton all the way to the people who yes. are actually putting who are together manufacturing, the manufacturing, designing the, the garments, fabrics. Mm. Then the tailors. Even before the, the us, yes. there are those designing Ab the fabrics. Absolutely. Or spinning, wind, weaving them. Mm. And then by the time they get to us, the ecosystem is huge. Is we huge. can employ this entire country. At, at that point, <laughs> actually, before I bring in Charles, um, mm. I'd like to ask you about the importance of skill and, if I might extend it, capital, in actually mm. bringing out this subsector. Mm. Um, how would you look at that? Money. For me, I look at capital. Money is key. Yeah. Ca money is part of capital. Mm. But money delivers most other needs, most other capital needs. Now, money is the fuel. Yeah. If you do not have the necessary capital, for instance, on Tuesday mm. at the Uganda International Fashion Week yes. virtual talk shows, yes. our topic is African fashion versus mm. Mm. globalization. Yeah. Yes, we are gifted by nature. We love to say that. Yeah. Yes, we are brand Uganda. But unless you maybe are a papa, yeah, made in Uganda, great. But when the consumer is buying an outfit, they are not, they are not bothered about who made it, first of all. Yeah. They are bothered <coughs> about, first of all, how does it meet the eye? Mm. Is it beautiful to look at? Mm. Next thing is, how has it been made? Mm. The packaging has to be right, but the production. And so the skilling is very key for our sector. It is key. I, we, had, we hosted uh, His Excellency the President's um, uh, s um, special secretary mm. on uh, youth in regards to innovation, value addition, export promotion, and agriculture. Mm. And I say to him, Killing is what this sector needs. Yeah. How are we going to compete with cheap China? Yes, it's cheap, but at the same time, it's taking the market. Mm. It's leading, you know. I it's hear you. We have the second-hand clothing. Mm. Much as second-hand clothing, we're a little bit slow because even I started from second-hand clothing. I loved to bend down in a window and select mm. the and best pieces mm. <laughs> 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 for myself. Because second-hand clothing is quality. Yes, yes it's second-hand, but it's clothing. Yes. It's quality. It's coming from <laughs> Europe. It's coming from the USA. Yes. So yeah. for us, we are saying right now we killed our industry. There yeah. is the, the, we need to rebuild. rebuild. And as we rebuild, mm. we cannot have a people walking and, uh, around naked. So mm. allow mm. the second-hand to come in as we build our industry. And make yeah. it transition. As we get yeah. fabrics mm. produced, as we equip those yeah. that actually turn the clothing let me say something about clothing and cotton. Now, right. cotton fetches us one dollar mm. at the global market. Yeah. Cotton, one kilo of cotton fetches a miserable one dollar. Mm. Yeah? Mm. One kilo of fashion, which is made in Uganda by Arapapa or mm. any other fashion designer for that, um, for that matter. Uh, for that matter, yeah. We don't fetch a miserable one dollar. Equip us and see what we'll do for this sector. Mm. We do not know the cotton 
Development Authority or the cotton growers of Italy. No, mm -hmm. but we know Gucci. We know Valentino. Correct. We know Salvatore Ferragamo. Mm -hmm. We know Louis Vuitton. We know these guys mm -hmm. because they turn the labor of the peasants, the cotton, mm -hmm. the fabric into magnificent pieces. And that Santa here is trying to be di top diplomatic, yeah. Yeah. not to actually <laughs> make that comparison. The analogy come out uh, <laughs> full cycle. One dollar to something, but it can be hundreds of dollars oh or even yes. thousands. Oh yes. Charles, key learnings here before yeah. we have the callers coming, because I'm seeing a number of uh, people here on the line. I think the first one that I see clearly is that Santa has gone beyond just being happy as a person. Mm. She could make her money anywhere and just feel happy about it. Mm. She's saying this sector must become a ringing tone everywhere in this country. That takes a lot of energy. That's right. Especially when you knock every other door and it seems to be closed. Yeah. And people are not bothered. They are saying this, this model has again come to disturb yes. us. This <laughs> model again like has come yes. to disturb us. <laughs> yes. so, but she's saying if you want to make a mark, mm. keep knocking. Yes. Keep knocking. Yes. Yes. Don't Few give up. people may understand your game yes. or your, 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 your concerns. Yes. But she's making a story and making a story with a lot of evidence. Mm. But two, she also makes another very cardinal point about Bubu. Mm. Bubu is not just announcing and saying, you know, this is made no. in Uganda. Yes. You buy it. Mm. She's saying, anybody buying an item, he's not saying who made it. Mm. He's himself, is it exactly what I wanted? Does it fulfill my expectations? Yeah. If it doesn't, remove your Bubu. Yeah. Yes. I'm not interested in your Bubu. Yeah. I want something that will work for my children, yeah. for my bedroom, for my dining table. Where is it? Where has it come from? I'm not interested. Skilling is fundamental. Mm -hmm. Bubu is a great policy. Back it up with the practical interventions. Yeah. Yes. And that's good coming from a professional. I think that's quite powerful. You need yeah. to tool them to actually yeah. deliver on that. Yeah. Viewers, at this point, you can be part of the discussion. Uh, for any mm -hmm. question or comments, I can now pick the calls. Um, when you come through, please just give us your name and your quick comment or question. Hello, you live on um, NTV. Hello? Well, I think uh, we still have a bit of an issue on the, on the, on the lines there. Santa, um, I'm sure there are people who have, um, before listening to you today, would just look at you <laughs> and say, I think she was born uh, with, a, like they say, a silver spoon. <laughs> yes. And, 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 that, and that kind of thing. And because I've seen many people, when an entrepreneur is struggling down here, yeah. if you notice, very correct. When they are up here, yes, everyone actually sees correct, and they're like, "Those guys are lucky." Yes. Do you yeah. ever get such comments? Yeah. Oh yes, absolutely. Mm. I, I get lots of those comments. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, there was a survey done at that time. We had our our studio in production unit in Kololo, and it was gated. Yeah. And the survey was done, and people said, "Oh no, that place, the kind of people that shop." At Arapapa must be like Arapapa herself, and they were listed. Yes. The <laughs> excellencies. <laughs> sorry, so, sorry, Santa, I have to cut you short. A bit. I have a call on the line. Hello, yes. kindly give us, you live on NTV, give us your name, quick question or comment. Sorry, I think I've lost that one. I'll pick another caller. Hello? 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 Well? Hello, caller? Hello. Sorry, I seem to have an issue with some of my lines today. But you can also reach us. There's a uh, mobile number on the screen. Um, uh, if you have any quick question or comment, you can drop me a WhatsApp, and then we can have it as a discussion here. Yes, Santa, you are still <coughs> continuing on that. Hello? Sorry. Hello? Yes. Kindly give us your name and your question or comment. Hello? Well... I think my lines, mm. you know, sometimes I have many callers, so they, mm. they tend mm. to jam my lines at mm. times. So, um, viewers, you can just give us, um, there's a line, a number on the screen. Just drop your question or, com or comment, and then we can, you know, pick it uh, mm. here in the studio. Mm. So, Santa, how do you respond to such people who think that it's, it is luck? It's, um, I mean, you just <laughs> no, found yourself there. You landed. Uh, I'll, I, no, it's no, it's not luck. It mm. is very hard 
work. Mm. We made 19 years, Mr. Chichi, by the way, wow, in Jalo July, and I didn't even realize it because we were busy carrying tables, shifting out of the village mall to our, <laughs> yes. to our factory outlet. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, our papa is described in totality mm. in three words. Mm. Persistence. Mm. In, in our 19th year, mm. these were my three comments. Persistence. Mm. Mm. Resilience mm -hmm. and tenacity. Sorry to cut you short, <laughs> Santa. I have a number of viewers calling me. Please just drop us a WhatsApp. Um, we can pick it from there. Don't just call on that line, uh, the mobile phone line on the screen. Just drop a WhatsApp. We'll pick your message. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I, I say that it's persistence, mm -hmm. it is resilience, mm -hmm. and it's tenacity. Yes. That's what's gotten us to 19 years as Ara Papa and, and, and oh Ara Papa, it's actually Ara Papa. Ara Papa. So you people have <laughs> modernized it Ara and Papa. you make me call it Ara Papa. It's Ara Papa. Ara and Papa. <laughs> yeah. Ara. And yeah, so it's not been easy. As a matter of fact, even yes. though my dad, yes. my parents were able, yes. yeah. when I started, my dad had retired. Okay. Mm. So he looked at me and he said, what am I going to do, mm -hmm. you know, for my girl? Yes. Yeah. He could not support me. Yes. Because he also believes, you know, I've educated you. Mm. You have cousins. There is a little, there's an old woman mm. are they, uh, whose kids need to go to school, you know. So mm. somehow mm. there was nothing. Mm. I started at zero. Mm. Wow. And I had, we started in a driveway mm. <laughs> wow. in, yes. in uh, Buganda Road. Mm. So my models <laughs> will do their work. <laughs> And the client <laughs> for uh, our host would yeah. show up yeah. and will stop, <laughs> freeze, mm. get off the driveway, allow them to drive, and then regroup, mm. wow. you know, minutes wow. later. Wow. So um, it's, it's not been easy. But like I said, mm. I'm in this for a very divine mm. reason. This mm. is a call, mm. and I can't run away from it. There have been times when... Even sector players have asked me, event managers, why are you doing this fashion? <laughs> it's drained you. Yes. Are you the government? Yes. You know, <laughs> and I have had that asked of me. So are you mm. the government? I you have know. someone here asking you, actually talking <laughs> about that. Um, mm. Prost is asking, are you working with the BTVET, um, you know, program, the Skill Uganda kind of program? Do you no. have any synergies to really? No, we don't. But mm. they have approached us, okay. asking us, to select their best and mm. retrain them. Yes. And I've said, yes, I am happy to do that, not just for you, mm. but for hundreds of Ugandans. But we need the capital. We need Uganda yeah. Development yeah. Bank yeah. to deliver yeah. on the president's promise to the sector. Mm. Yeah. We need to be, you know, recapitalized. We need to be financed. Mm. All these things are possible. Okay. We have mm. the contacts in the best economies mm. that have thrived on fashion. I hear you. Across mm. the board. I have Patricia here. She's asking. She's from Seguku. She wants to start a bracelet business. Mm -hmm. uh, still, the other question we're trying to address, I want to go into fashion. What do I do? And I think I'll put it to you and Charles. Mm. 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 Okay. Um, I would say to Patricia that uh, follow your dream. Mm. <coughs> if you really believe that this is the call you have on you, to produce, design, produce, and sell the best bracelets mm. ever, mm. then don't listen to, to even Santa, because Santa wasn't called to make bracelets. I may not necessarily understand her, but Patricia, do yourself such. Mm. If you feel that this is the call you have on your life, go ahead and do it. I insist on the call on your life, because ultimately we are very spiritual beings. Mm. If you are in a call, to cook and then you venture into fashion because Santa seems to be thriving, <laughs> you're in for a great fall. I hear you. And <laughs> at, at the same time, Patricia, put your best foot forward. Skill, learn as much as you can, and, and move. Stop Charles, thinking, move. <laughs> Charles, you can add to that, yeah. but then as you do, yeah. Caleb is also wondering. There are many people with ideas like him, yeah. but they don't know why, where to start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, the lady was asked about the bracelets. Mm. Santa's hit the, ma the nail on the head. Do your research, mm. learn. Others have done it. Santa started getting her inspiration from exactly people who were right on the ground and kept on saying, as I go and watch on a television program, I'm looking at what's happening in Italy. I'm looking at what's happening the other side. Yeah. Begin to get yourself to watch who are already in that space and mm. work backwards. Yeah. And as you work backwards, begin to be ready to start basic. 
Santa started doing her things on Buganda Road, Kampala yeah. Road. Mm. Now, that was crazy. Mm. But at the same time, you need to be aware that it takes a much longer time for you to begin to make money in mm. an area as unique as that. Mm. Because people are already saying, well, we have solutions. Who are you? It's not that you have come here and we are not getting bracelets from somewhere. Mm. Now, be ready to go for a tough, tough, long journey as you struggle to make your mark. Mm. But above all, don't compromise on your values. Yeah. Yeah. She says it, and it is very correct. Mm. 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 Charles, um, I have someone here, Stephen from Somalia, is wondering, um, and Santa as well, what kind of input can we do to help the youth in the villages to actually come up and see some of these opportunities? Mm. Yeah. I think, um, given what we have been sharing here in these Sunday evenings, we discover that where you are, with what you have, can you start delivering a solution some, to someone? Mm. That story came up from the story of Gino. Mm. Let the young man be taught what it means to keep packaging a solution with the resources they have where they are yeah. and for a community where they are. Mm. And then over time, be taught the basics of building an, a business out of, around that, mm. managing money. Mm. reinvesting profits mm. and coping with loneliness and people calling you all types of names even coping with people who doubt you those are things that ha are mindset related yeah. but they can be uh, dealt with mm. Mm. Santa uh, someone is asking here um, she's Justine she's wondering she realized the rise in, in crotched knitted clothes crotched, mm -hmm. crotched knitted clothes so would you advise mm -hmm. uh, a beginner on how to start about that well, I think it's still boil. I cannot say do or don't. Mm. You see, it still boils down to who are you, Justin? Yeah. Justin, who are you? When you listen to your innermost self, what do you hear? Mm. Mm. Yourself, that mm. inner man telling you to do. Mm. It's very important that you listen to that. Of yeah. course, if you come to me and say, I want to get into crocheting, mm -hmm. I will give you the tips. Yeah. You know, master your art. Mm -hmm. Once it's mastered, you've done your research, you've mastered your art, mm -hmm. introduce it. Mm -hmm. Launch mm -hmm. it onto the market. Yes. Mm -hmm. How you're going to launch it also depends on you know, uh, the, the, your, the resources available to you. Mm -hmm. But you are not going to launch something if you also cannot sustain its product yes, uh, yes. productivity mm -hmm. you have to ensure that you have new designs coming out of that same idea mm. almost on a daily mm. i'm a fashion designer and what has happened is even if you came to my workshop yeah. you will find people who will walk to me and say i have this event i need a dress I'm not going to go to anyone's magazine to look for a design to present to them. Mm. The first thing I do is I get my pencil and paper. Mm -hmm. And I look at this person and I start to recommend. I recommend by sketching. Mm -hmm. And then mm. I present them. Most times they will love the sketch. They will pay for them. They will pay for it and go. But that means that in a day, I have to have at least 20 fresh ske sketches yeah. mm. ready to be sold. Yeah. Mm. So... Um, <laughs> get in touch with yourself is that for mm. sure is that what you know for sure you want to do yeah. and then get equipped good starting point Charles yeah. I have yeah. about 15 people here who yeah. want to get mentored yes and want to know how to get in touch with you yes and uh, how they can go about it right mm -hmm. I can give you the contacts very quickly uh, there's info at enterprise dot co dot ug landline Zero three one two three eight two one zero zero. Mobile can be zero seven seven two six nine nine eight zero eight. Thank you very much, Charles. The yeah. same question goes to Santa as well. Mm. The number of people who have attached by your fashion story and they really want to get in touch with you, see how you know they can uh, probably because they say it rubs off. Yes. You know? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Well, I I am doing quite a lot of consultancies in regards to my business, but 
like Charles will tell you, the principles are the same mm -hmm. in fashion, in agriculture, in health. You know, yeah. they are mm -hmm. all businesses. Mm -hmm. And so I am happy to, to share of, of my knowledge and my experience mm -hmm. in, in mentorship. And uh, you can reach me, uh, especially through my Facebook page, which messages for sure I will not miss, which is uh, Arapapa by Santa Anzo or Santa Anzo, you know. And then, of course, you can also call us at 0393 Very good. Yeah. Mm. Charles, mm. very interesting story today. Extremely interesting. And uh, it is interesting to see that somebody who opened a totally new sector mm. has remained true to the calling and not only is she saying to hell if nobody wants to listen to me i am also tired she's saying until my last drop my last energy is removed i'm at it <laughs> that resilience yeah. and you saw her three guiding principles yeah. persistence resilience, resilience tenacity, tenacity. <laughs> mm. all those three words just bring one thing at the end of it all sweat yeah. yeah. Sweat it out. Yeah. yeah. Sweat it out. And look at what she said about how to serve a customer. Every day it's a customized solution. Yes. You could get tired. <laughs> Just yeah. say, no, give that one <laughs> the, the, the sketch of yesterday. <laughs> I'm tired. Yes. <laughs> yes. But then she says, no, every customer must be served alone. Yeah. yeah. And served to the fullest satisfaction. Mm. Mm. That is what it means to empty yourself and transform the society. But then she's doing that while building talent and giving hope to others. Extremely key. Mm -hmm. yeah. Santa, your last word. Mm -hmm. Very important. Um, I gratitude mm -hmm. uh, to Enterprise Uganda for this mm -hmm. conversation, to NTV for hosting us, and then to my family. Thank you so much, my sisters and brothers, most especially my dad, Peter Ikudolo. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. He's um, not very well right now. He's 80. Three, so wow. we are very proud of wow. him <laughs> walking his 83rd journey, and of course, my mom, Chezira Ikudolo, and my lovely, lovely, lovely little girl, Elata. Mm. She prayed for me when I was coming here, <laughs> 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 and she said, Please be yourself. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes, mm. and of course, uh, I would like to call upon the general public, the government of Uganda, that it was not by accident or he wasn't in a dream when, his pre when the president said that fashion is the second most important growth economy post COVID-19. Mm. We need to create jobs for our, you know, our youth and women who are naturally called to be in this sector. Mm. This is a $3 trillion industry mm -hmm. capable of employing all unemployed, but at the same time mm. capable of bringing in the dollars in millions that mm. Uganda needs. Mm -hmm. We, you are lucky, we are lucky to have ourselves. My sector is self-driven. Mm. We are passionate. I have colleagues mm. that are in, are in this with me. Mm. It's a do or die for us. Mm. And mm. we are moving forward. And we'd like for you to join us. Mm. Let us promote and create, you know, brand Uganda, made in Uganda. Mm. And let's give it a very, you know, mm. world-class appeal. Thank and you. You know, we, we, we are happy. Thank you very much, you. Santa. Mm. It's been a pleasure, really, um, having mm. you around. Mm. Mm. And uh, Charles, true. thank you, as always. Thank you. Viewers, um, mm. I'm sure you've taken notes and you've picked quite something, mm. quite inspirational, inspirational stuff uh, yeah. from here. We committed here, same time next week, to continue giving you more of such tips, mm. uh, experiences of people that are practicing. I mean, Santa and fashion. Really, you cannot separate the two. Yes, so that's the approach we are taking. And Enterprise Uganda is committed with NTV Uganda to actually bring you the best uh, in the industry so that you can pick as much information and knowledge and education out of this. Because we know, like we always say, Charles, yeah. there's big business acumen, yes. but there's mentorship as well. Yeah. You have to be coached and refined to actually do things in a certain way. Yeah. I've been your host, Charles Boji. I would like to wish you a very good evening. Thank you for watching. Catch you next time.